On this episode of Gambler Spec, it is crunch time. We've only got a couple days left to get ready for Gambler, and I've got a list of stuff that needs to be done. Uh, one thing, I already installed it, but on our last test of suspension as I was driving out on the dirt road, I lost the air cleaner, didn't know about it, did donuts in the dust, and uh, who knows how much dust I sucked up. But I think what happened was this thing is massive and heavy, and so I think with just the vibrations of the engine, the vibrations of the car, over time that just pulled itself off. It was just held on with that simple clamp. Um, so I opted for one that's much shorter. I'm hoping that uh, the shorter length as well as uh, being a little bit lighter will put a little less pressure on it. I think I'm also going to come back and just throw you know, some type of a tech screw or something in there just as a safety precaution so we don't lose that again because that would be a disaster to go all gambler without an air cleaner. So here's the list that we've got here. I guess we could check some of this off. So rear lift is done, rear shocks are done, front shocks are half done. I still got the other one. Uh, front wheel spacers are done. Uh, remove rear seat, done. What else? None of that stuff. Uh, so siren ho horn mounting, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. So I'm going to put a question mark by there. I think it makes sense if I can get to it. Um, decals, I'm going to work on that today. Uh, bumper, I'm going to try to bend up some tubing and bring that with me. And then the license plate mount will then attach to that rear bumper. Um, backup lights and light bar have both been ordered, so they should be in Idaho. So really, all these things, um, with the exception of siren horn mounting, I'll have to decide on that one. But I think all these things, it's possible to get done this week. Um, the main thing is I've got to bend up the tubing here before I leave uh, in order to get that done while I'm in Idaho because we don't have a tubing bender up there. So I'm going to get cracking on this stuff and uh, show you what we get done. All right, let's try a uh, non-time lapse this time. So basically, I got this vinyl design that I made for uh, my son's mini bike. And the thing I liked about it was that it's striped. And so as you kind of look down on it, uh, the stripes kind of fade away and blow this off. So I thought it would be perfect for the skid plate because of the angle that it's at. So I cut that out this morning. That's what it looked like. I just use green because I have a lot and don't really use it. Uh, so what I've done so far, put the transfer tape on it, cut just a strip off the top of the backing paper so that I can kind of eyeball and get an idea. I think I'm going to cut this other side off too. <laughs> These ends kind of get in the way. And you're trying to see if it's actually centered or not. I actually went back after I did his design. I was cutting this one out. I went back and added this box around it just to give me a frame of reference so I know what's straight and what's not. Because otherwise, it's so hard to tell when you just kind of rough cut it out of there. Think center between these bolts, something like that. Honestly, part of the reason I don't, I usually do time lapse is because I'm kind of picky. Just come down a bit. I'm kind of picky and uh, perfectionist, which is why the Gambler Spec motto was a necessary invention for us when we were actually trying to build a gambler car for the first time, because otherwise I just obsess about things so much that it kind of takes the fun out of it. 
So again, which back is just a way for me to remember that it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting it good and we're gonna go have a good time with it. So that's pretty good this way. And the other way, I think that's pretty good too. Let me just take a step back, overanalyze it real quick. Yeah, I think that's good. So then what I'll do, just try to keep it from getting out of whack. Transfer tape helps with that. It just kind of helps hold everything for you temporarily so that you can get it stuck without too many funky issues or the vinyl trying to run away on you. The M has some little pieces without this transfer tape. I think they would just kind of run wild, do whatever they want. Okay, so that's on, just kind of smooth from the inside out, get rid of bubbles. Bubbles are not super critical uh, at this point because I'm just using it for a stencil. It's mainly just, we don't want any at the edge of the spaces because then our paint will bleed. off carefully the vinyl is pretty sticky so usually don't have too many issues with pulling that back off I'm gonna reuse that for my masking as well once I get all this off That's looking pretty good. <coughs> Just got a can of uh, pure white. If it gets a little bit overstrained in other places, it's not a big deal. That's the advantage of having a vehicle that's all spray painted black. Pretty easy to touch up, but if I can save myself some time and having to go back, sure. Let me do a light. Do a little tack coat first. Okay, we'll give that a second to dry. Probably a medium-ish coat here. Hopefully, gonna have to touch up the bottom. That's okay. Too. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for just a second, not all the way, and then we'll peel it off. All right, that seems okay. Can try to peel off here.
All right, last letter. All right, I'm gonna let that dry. Came out pretty good. A couple of little things we'll fix around the edges here in a minute. But uh, overall, yeah, came out good. So we got the rooftop tent cover out here and I cut out the vinyl, stuck it on. I've never uh, spray painted on the vinyl before, but Google tells me it'll be fine. So we're going with that. It does seem like this vinyl is, or this, the sticker vinyl is sticking to the vinyl fabric and leaving a film. I use just clear packing tape in hopes that I wouldn't have to clean off even more sticky stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a light coat of white on this. And then I guess we'll just see how it turns out. So I peeled off all the vinyl, it looks pretty good. No real major issues. Only thing is in between these where the, the uh, vinyl sticker was, there's a sticky, like a sticky film. But I think what I'll do is let that completely dry and then at the very end, maybe in a couple days I'll come back and just maybe wipe that down with, with some Windex or something that will clean it off. But I'm gonna let that dry. It looks very clean. I mean, it looks like a sticker to me. So we'll get the, uh, I got the Gambler logo going on this end. And then we've got the bigger end of the YouTube symbol. I'm gonna try that in red uh, as soon as this dries up a little bit. So you can see now uh, with the red and then I took the vinyl off the Gambler 500 part as well. Everything came out pretty good. We've got a few spots to touch up, like in between there. Just some overspray spots and then we'll be good to throw that back on okay there's the final product came out pretty good it's installed and just finishing up on the drying uh, got to do a couple more things before I leave I'm gonna try to come up with some type of a door bar here and then also a two bumper um, I don't have time to actually put everything together here because I've got to leave tomorrow, but I'm going to try to get some bends done and then just throw the tubing in the truck or on the trailer and bring it with me so that hopefully my friend Dustin and I can get the, get those two things done. The door bars and the rear bumper is kind of our goal when we get there. So I'm going to be bending up some tube today and then uh, loading it up on the truck. Going through Colorado here. On our way up to Idaho, taser in tow. So far, so good. All right, that's it for Colorado. Now we got a whole lot of Utah to go. There we go. I stayed with my brother last night and uh, left this morning about 6 a.m. and on my way to Boise now. Oh, wow. That's not good. Holy crap. Oh man. Well, I thought I was about to have an emergency there. Driving from uh, Tremont in Utah where I filled up to Boise, I have never run out of gas before. Uh, but as I'm about 15 miles outside of Boise, gas light comes on and uh, luckily there's one more gas station. So I stopped to fill up and I am getting 8.9 miles to the gallon. Got a pretty serious headwind that I'm running into. Uh, in fact, it looks like the old rooftop tent uh, cover has been ripped open. So I got about 15 more miles to Boise. I'll hop out and assess the damage and just see what it's gonna take to get that fixed up. All right, we got to Boise pretty windy let's check the damage mm. well I was kind of hoping it ripped on the seam but uh, it looks like it did not so the stitches were strong enough but the fabric was not so I'm not sure how we'll fix that but we got to do something about it for now uh, I think I'm gonna get another ratchet strap and just throw on there. Morning. Last day before the gambler and we have a ton of work to do. Let me show you what we got on the schedule here. 
We've got some pre-bent tubes that I made before I left. So that's gonna be for the bumper. Uh, we've got a handyman jack. We've gotta get mounted on somewhere. We've got a 42 inch light bar for the front. We got a shock for the front passenger side that still needs to be replaced. We got six inch LEDs, we got four inch LEDs, we got the torn tent cover, and we got this toolbox to install. That's a ton of stuff to do in one day. We'll do our best and see if we can finish getting ready. We've only got today left and then we're uh, headed to Gambler in the morning. Wish us luck.
we're about out of light here on the last day before Gambler. I just want to show you what we got done before it got too dark. So we got the rear bumper done. You can see here we added the reverse lights, which would be really nice. Got a spot for the license plate. And then for now it's covering up the hitch, but we'll get the spring cover so that that's, uh, you can fold it up to be able to see the hitch there. Uh, we got toolbox installed in the back. That works good. We got dome lights. I'll show you how they work. We wired everything back to the original lighting so you can kind of see the... This one kind of lights up the cargo area and this one lights up like the map light area. So that works and it all comes back to the same interior switch as before. I'll turn on the reverse lights too. So reverse lights work on the same reverse light wire as factory. Uh, Dustin's wife fixed us up on the tent. So that was nice. So we got that hole patched up. And then we also added the light bar. And uh, we were struggling to figure out where to put the switch. But we have this extra switch for the rear defroster so we were able to use that to power the light bar so we've got lots of lights interior lights backup lights we got the big light bar up front and uh, I think that's pretty much gonna do it now we're just kind of cleaning everything up and uh, buttoning up the stuff that uh, is still undone we kind of had to make a big mess of the wires you can see all the junk we had to cut. We were searching to try to find that rear defrost wire, but it was worth it. We did end up finding it, got it wired in. We didn't have to put in any aftermarket switches or anything. So we're going to pack up now. It's probably the end of the video for our gambler prep. Appreciate you watching.